Hey guys, today we are going to look at the seven most expensive cards from Hour of Devastation. Uh, we will focus on the seven, but I'm going to read you down the ten. Nico Bolas, the big baddie, Planeswalker is out, obviously number one. The Locust God is number two. Razakaf, the Foul Blooded, is number three. Nico Bolas, the Deceiver, which interestingly enough is the introduction, Nico Bolas is number four. The Excavator is five, and that is the only rare and rare the top seven, and that is the one that allows you to play land from your graveyard. So that is going to be a very good one. The Scorpion God is next at six, and then Nissa Genis Mage is rounds it out. So Nissa Genis Mage, I believe, is also the introduction deck. I'm almost certain but let's talk about the rest we have pride sovereign we have Samut the tested we have the sphinx lord and then bantu's last reckoning all very very good cards so nicobolas how good is he people are going to want to play him he's reminds me a lot of emiko emiko you gotta get down as fast as you can and then you just take over the game Yes, your opponent can still beat you, but it's very difficult. And Nico Bolas has four abilities. I think his first three abilities are very good. His ultimate is always very difficult to get to. I don't see his price being $28. I see it being sub-20. It's just a very difficult task for a Planeswalker to be above $20 when they there are masterpieces in the set. Now, the one difference I see for Nico Bolas as the hyped, most hyped card of this set, uh, so far at least, is the fact that he's A, Nico Bolas, and B, the masterpieces themselves are not that amazing when you compare it to something like Gideon Ally Zendikar, where Gideon Ally Zendikar was in a set with all 10 Fetchland masterpieces and all 10 Shockland masterpieces, and the filter land masterpieces. So overall, there was just too much value in that set. Gideon still remained at 20. Next, the Locust God. This is my preferred god. Do I believe it's worth the $19? Blank no. It's okay. Um, it's just okay. I see this one tanking quite a bit. The gods themselves are just kind of creatures. Like, they're just legendary creatures with a subtype of god. They don't really have the indestructibility. They have this pseudo indestructibility. When it dies, it goes back to your hand. But the tempo that you're giving for that is so immense because these things are kind of expensive. So you're not really going to be able to put more on the board except your god. Now, the Locust God is very good. I like the fact that you get your 1 1s. But he's not like. Remember, you're paying for a blue and a red. This is a lot of mana for a blue deck. And it's not something that you would look at and say, huh, this is going to be... In the EDH, there are way better Planeswalkers in blue and red, in my opinion. Uh, maybe even Grixis Planeswalkers would be much stronger. I don't know. I think it's overall just a decent card. It is my favorite god, but that doesn't say very much. All right, the Foul-Blooded... This thing costs 8. My goodness, it costs 8. But you can tutor like crazy. So EDH gold, it is. But in standard, like how are you going to get to 8? Like 8 is very difficult to get to in standard. I know removal is okay now. Burn is much weaker. Or lightning bolt costs 2 in a red now instead of just 1 red. And aggro is generally much, much weaker given the fact that there's so many board wipe removals. So you don't want to put everything on the table. But at the same time, 8 is a lot. And it's not like you're tutoring for card advantage. You're sacrificing a creature. You're paying 2 life. And then you still have to play out that card. So it's kind of illogical almost in standard because you have an 8-8 eight, eight flying trample and somehow you got to 8 mana. So you could have played Nicol Bolas or probably something better. But what you're deciding to do is you're deciding to sacrifice something to tutor. It's an AA Flying Trample. Like it's, I wish it was a little weaker and a little cheaper, but you have a combination of both. It's two goods, but not a great. 
Too good does not equal a great. This is going to be an interesting card. I feel like they did a great job. Uh, one of the things that new players need is they need planeswalkers, and they need to be able to get guaranteed planeswalkers because that's going to drive new casual players. People like planeswalkers. That is not a mystery. That is not something I'm making up. People like planeswalkers. Everyone likes planeswalkers, especially new players. And to give them a guaranteed planeswalker, I think that's really smart. That's very, very smart. And Nick, to give them Nico Boles, that's great. That's fantastic because um, the deck, I mean, people just want to play this epic dragon planeswalker. If they cannot afford or want to buy into standard, they can just play this trial deck. I, I like the, the trial decks. They are very impressive, and out of all the products that they've released or re-released or reprinted, this is my favorite product, mainly because it can get new people into Magic. Um, getting new people into Magic is very important. It is the lifeblood of Magic the Gathering. Without it, there is no local game store. There is no community, and this is going to get them there. Uh, next, we talk about this <laughs> Naga Cleric. What can I say? Uh, you may play land cards from your graveyard. That's about it. The artwork is a little creepy. I think I like the promo artwork better. I don't know where... Was that the release promo? Was that the same picture? Like, I man, it's kind of creepy. And I would much rather have it be anything but a snake. Not that snakes creep me out. It's just kind of like I don't want to play this card because of the artwork. Not that the artwork is bad. It's just kind of creepy. So why is this card going to be so good? Well, there's another card called Crucible. And that card is whoa, whoa pricey, whoa pricey. This card is a land version of it. Or, sorry, a creature version of Crucible. Well, Crucible is an artifact. Cost the same. In EDH, you may play land cards from your graveyard. That includes fetch land, so you will always be able to fetch for a land, and you can mana accelerate so fast. And also wasteland. If you want to be really mean, you can wasteland, you can strip mine, and there you go. Next, the Scorpion God, which is a lesser god in my opinion, and this is a god destined to be under $5. Unless I'm completely wrong and there's some back-breaking card that I don't know of. Free a red and a black. Uh, creature, whenever a creature with a minus one, minus one counter on it dies, draw a card. That's nice. It's got a good power and toughness. Six, five. One, a black and a red. Put a minus one, minus one counter on another target creature. That's actually pretty good. And then it has this pseudo invincibility. Uh, I know they did it for lore because, like, Nicobolas is supposed to kill these Am Amarket and Our Devastation Gods. And he actually ends up killing most of them, I feel like. But this pseudo thing is just not really good. If you're aggro, like, this is not aggro. This is, like, the definition of anti-aggro. And I really wish that they would push aggro because that is my favorite deck. And you know why is it my favorite deck? Because it takes... The least amount of skill, and when you get off work and you just woke up at 6 a.m. and then you just got out of work at 6 p.m., I want to play a deck that doesn't really require me to think too much, and that is aggro, which has not been great recently. All right, the next Planeswalker. We get more Gatecrash. Yay, Gatecrash. How many Nissers can we get? A bazillion. Um, Nissa is, this is the Planeswalker introduction introduction card it's good i mean it's exactly what a new player would want i think it's relatively strong for what it is and one of the things about these planeswalkers are is you can only get them at these planeswalker decks so if you're not willing to pay the full retail on it trading for these will be difficult uh, how do we know that trading for these will be difficult imagine the players who have these cards the player who buys a Planeswalker deck is very unlikely to sell it to a store, and they're very unlikely to trade it. They're much more likely to value it, put it in their deck, and if that's their first Planeswalker, they did a very good thing. Uh, this is a great product, and I commend them for making it. I just wish that they would make more introduction products. They are going that way with the uh, board game decks, right, where you have four decks, and they're all pre-made, 
and you put it on your you know you put it on somewhere and when you have non-magic fr friends they can just pick up a deck and play right that's smart anyway leave me a comment below bye guys